Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning to all of you and thank you for joining us for today's ASEAN Digital Literacy Forum. My name is Theodore Sokota and I will be the master of ceremony for today's forum. The way we become informed, debate and form our opinions have changed profoundly with the prevalence of online media. We as the society are sending out unbelievable amounts of data onto the web every day. This increases accessibility to huge amount of information. However, there is also the other implication from this phenomenon. Viral online misinformation and disinformation has been identified by the World Economic Forum as one of the biggest threats to the society. Young people are among the most vulnerable groups who are prone to radicalization, hate speech, false news, and intolerance. As a way to contribute to the effort of preventing misinformation and disinformation, ASEAN Foundation with the support from Google organizes today's ASEAN Digital Literacy Forum. Today's forum will provide a space for all of us to hear from experts and also to exchange views on the issues of misinformation and disinformation, particularly during COVID-19 times. Most importantly, hopefully this forum will also help us to generate ideas to be part of the solution to combat misinformation and disinformation in ASEAN. Today's forum will consist of two roundtable sessions, with the first session focuses on the topic of misinformation in COVID-19 times, while the second session will be focusing on the topic of media literacy in the times of COVID-19. Aside from two roundtable sessions, we will also launch a digital comic titled Digital Literacy 101 and launch the ASEAN Foundation's new program with Google.org called the ASEAN Digital Literacy Program. Now, let's hear from His Excellency Ambassador Nguyen Hai Bang, ASEAN Foundation Chair of Board of Trustees and Permanent Representative of the Socialist Republic of Vietnam to ASEAN about the importance of building digital literacy to counter the spread of misinformation. We are living in the digital era, the information era, and we cannot deny that we all benefit greatly from the huge amount of information we receive every day with every passing hour and minute. Just with a smartphone connected to the internet or at a mouse click. But our young ASEAN citizens need to be aware that everything has a bad side. Not all the news and stories and advertisements flooding our everyday life are true. Sometimes they are just half true or totally fake. Therefore, it is important to guide our young generation on how to judge, to evaluate the credibility of the information, to differentiate genuine information from misinformation and disinformation, so as not to be misled by them. I therefore welcome the initiative of ASEAN Foundation to organize this roundtable discussion, a very good effort to encourage our young ASEAN citizens to develop a critical way of thinking, a judging behavior and skills when using information on the internet or from social media platforms, helping them to become wise digital users, knowing how to protect themselves from fake, misinformation or disinformation, making the best use of information for their work and their life. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador Bang, for your insightful remarks. All of us today definitely echo your message about the importance of credibility of information and not to be misled by information we access every day. Before we begin, I would like to introduce our moderator and speakers for today's roundtable discussions. The panels will be moderated by Dr. Yang Mi Eng, the Executive Director of ASEAN Foundation. On the first session of roundtable discussion, we will have two insightful speakers joining us. The first one is Ms. Sabaria Muhammad Saleh, Senior Lecturer at the Faculty of Social Sciences and Humanities of University Kebangsaan Malaysia. And second, Kin Piu Chin Ki, ASEAN Foundation alumni from Myanmar and co-founder and head of external affairs at Big Tech ASEAN. On the second sessions of roundtable discussion, we will have four insightful speakers. The first one is His Excellency, Mr. Wilfredo E. Cabral, Chair of ASEAN Senior Officials Meeting on Education 
and the Regional Director at the Department of Education of the Philippines. Second, His Excellency Dr. Sok Prasit, Chairperson of ASEAN Senior Officials Meeting Responsible for Information, Chairperson and the Secretary of State of Ministry of Information of Cambodia. Third one is Ms. Santi Indra Astuti, Lecturer of Communication Science, Islamic University of Bandung, and a member of Mafindo Presidium. Last but not least, Ms. Tenzin Norbu, Director of Government Affairs and Public Policy at Google. Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to request you all to turn on your camera for the photo tagging session. To all speakers and participants, please get ready and show us your wonderful smile. Three, two, one, cheese. Just to be safe, let's take another shot. Get ready, everyone. Three, two, one, cheese. Thank you. Now, please join me in welcoming Dr. Yang Mi Eng as the moderator who will facilitate the next two sessions of roundtable discussions. Dr. Yang, the screen is yours. Nivtat uh, Dongchak from Laos to ASEAN. So these are all our uh, special guests today. And I would like to welcome especially two of our great speakers, uh, which is uh, very famous. I know Ms. Sabaria uh, Muhammad Saleh, a Senior Lecturer, School of Media and Communication Studies, uh, Faculty of Social Science and Military at UKM. Uh, it's my, I think it's my senior, <laughs> I perhaps. So uh, also a special thank and welcome to Miss Kim Pyu uh, Chinki K. Uh, K is actually uh, not a stranger to us. She's always here. And I'm very glad to see you here uh, this morning, uh, Ki, uh, for uh, representing Dick Tech uh, or ASEAN. So uh, before I start, I wanted to give you some background. Uh. Uh, fake news is not something that we don't know. Eh? Fake news and misinformation are emerging challenges that the ASEAN member states must address as the access to digital and platform and internet has grown rapidly eh, in the uh, whole world, eh, especially in ASEAN, eh, among the ASEAN citizens. So data from January 2020 from We Are Social reported that the internet penetration rate in the region is 66%, which reflects a year-on-year -year growth of 8.2%. And social media usage is at 63%, a 7.7% increase from the previous year. So ASEAN is taking a very concrete steps to prevent fake news and misinformation regarding the COVID-19 pandemic. That uh, can potentially saw a climate of distrust. Huh? So we see that this is really something that we have to discuss. That's why we have these two uh, special panels huh, with us today. Uh, but some housekeeping, uh, while you are listening to this session, uh, they will take 20 minutes for uh, the whole discussion and 10 minutes for Q&A. And for all the audience, please do feel free yeah, to put your questions in the chat box. We will collect it and summarize it and I'll give it to our panel later. So uh, let us discuss our uh, discussion today. So uh, it's a very basic question uh, to uh, Ms. Sabaria. Uh, what is misinformation and what is disinformation? What is these two things? Okay, thank you for the question, uh, Dr. Yang. Okay, so misinformation and disinformation is basically what people would call as fake news. It's a term popularized by Trump uh, and a lot of people uh, say that you know misinfo and disinfo is equivalent to fake news but actually there is a distinct difference. Uh, the distinct difference between misinfo and disinfo lies in the intention of sharing uh, that particular information. Okay, so misinformation and disinformation are both false information. But misinformation is uh, false information that you share uh, when you feel, you know, genuinely, you be genuinely believe that the information is true. Uh, when you feel that uh, you 
genuinely believe that the information is credible uh, and you are sharing it out of concern and care. It's similar to know, you know, like you, we often get, I know about you, but I often get uh, forwarded messages on my WhatsApp groups, you know, sharing about uh, things that are happening, uh, about rumors circulating, you know, the danger of the white van uh, which are kidnapping children uh, or, you know, uh, COVID cures, COVID-19 cures. Uh, and etc. So these are types of uh, misinformation which actually can be quite dangerous but I guess we'll talk about it uh, later. Okay, uh, but this information is an act of sharing information when you know that it is false but you still share it because you have an ulterior motive. You have an intention to harm. You have something to gain out of it. Uh, you know, you want to harm someone financially or, you know, uh, mentally or even uh, emotionally. So this information is a tactic, I would say, like a propaganda, a tactic that people often use, you know, to gain something for themselves. Recording in progress. They to kill a character. It could be in a form of imposter content. Uh, it could be in a form of, you know, something shared in a false context. A manipulated content, a fabricated content. So this uh, uh, this information is basically information, false information shared with with an intention uh, to harm uh, or uh, to uh, to actually yeah harm and affect people. So yeah, that's the difference between misinformation uh, and disinformation. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Sabaria. So that means uh, intention is the differences, uh, difference yes, uh, for these two things, uh, whether mm -hmm. it be the ill intention or without intention, but without knowing that it is a fake news. Uh. Yes. So I, okay, sometimes uh, based on instinct, you know, we always think that we were based on instinct without any scientific methods. So we think that this is real. Yeah? So that's why we uh, you know this information been uh, distributed. Yeah? So we always, um, I think, overjudge yeah, our instinct. <laughs> so yeah. why? Since we know that these information are harmful, why is it that people still want to distribute this sort hmm. of information? Okay, that's the thing. Like, like you said, when people share, uh, there are sometimes people sharing information without checking the credibility, without checking if it's really true. Because what I find in uh, our current generation is digital technologies uh, and etc. We have, uh, according to research as well, we have this need to be the first to publish, uh, the first to share a particular piece of information. And this even goes to the news agencies. Uh, there are also news agencies that share uh, misinfo, disinfo without checking for facts, and then they had to retract. Uh, back whatever they have published uh, online uh, and even printed on paper. So it's it's the for me it's a need to to be the first uh, to publish and also uh, like I said the keyword with sharing this information is about your intention. So false information people sometimes share false information because they believe that they will gain something for it. Uh, it could be power. Uh, it could be authority, uh, it could be money, uh, it could also be control. So I guess that's why uh, people share uh, without even thinking. There is this guy, uh, Mikko Sikorsky, who is very famous because he shares this information uh, about the US presidential election, which made him millions of dollars. He's like one of the richest guys uh, in uh, one of the small European countries. I cannot uh, remember offhand now what's the name of the country, but he's one of the one of the most richest guys with yachts and everything. So he makes money by sharing this information about the US presidential election and he claim that he helped Trump won. So it could also be, you know, this monetary uh, gain uh, that influences people to share misinfo, disinfo. But, uh, okay, about this is a very good example. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, it's also very tricky uh, for uh, policymakers and, uh, you know, all of us who wanted to make it right. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Because uh, now we see examples like this, like uh, you can be rich, you know. Mm-hmm. Isn't this going to be very tough when uh, cases like this have been promoted also? And then uh, many young people, uh, especially because today we are targeting at young people, uh, might actually follow the steps because they also wanted to make money, you know. Mm-hmm. So uh, what do you say about this? What do you have to say about this? Uh, actually, it's kind of scary, to be honest. Uh, because I see uh, nowadays, even in Malaysia, uh, for instance, there are just too many so-called news portals uh, uh, which shares information or so-called news just based on a cut and paste uh, of someone's comment on Twitter or someone's update on Instagram and all that. And it is quite scary. But we, I mean, uh, from research, we know that it is because it makes money. People like to click on something sensational. People, uh, and every click actually gains them uh, revenue from advertisers uh, and etc. So as much as, you know, how Malaysia, we try to have this fake news law and all that, uh, we also need to think about how we can educate our young people uh, in trying, in being more more uh, aware in being more discerning when they uh, come across any information uh, because I think it's very difficult to stop someone okay stop all fake news and all that I mean loss itself for me I, I believe it cannot be it will be very challenging right so I think it has to come from both ways uh, you know there'll be the rules and regulation for instance but we must also educate and inculcate um, media and information literacy skills among our young people so they themselves can judge you know what is right what is wrong they can do their own fact checking uh, and they can be a smarter digital media user Okay, I think uh, before I go to K, I wanted to pose one more question because hmm. most people may not be uh, uh, aware of the effects or not impact of hmm. this kind of misinformation being distributed. Uh. Mm-hmm. So what is the uh, impact and what is the uh, negative things that are going to happen to uh, misinformation and disinformation if it's continue to be uh, spread, you know? Hmm. It's very dangerous actually because uh, it affects our decision-making process. Uh, it creates irrational fear sometimes uh, with misinfo and disinfo. For example, in Malaysia, uh, we uh, there's this argument about the usage of ivermectin uh, in treating COVID-19. I mean, in Telegram, I did a research about it. So in Telegram, there are groups with more than 20,000 people who are sharing their personal opinion about you know, their experience in using ivermectin. Uh, it's proven to be uh, you know, beneficial and cure their yeah, COVID-19 and etc. Uh, but we must know that it is still something that is being researched on. The research is stop- still ongoing. Uh, even WHO also mentioned that ivermectin can only be used in clinical trials, but there are Malaysians who use it. And they somehow uh, could obtain this IVM uh, from various sources. Uh, and it has been reported that there are people who are poisoned by ivermectin because they use it to cure the, uh, their COVID-19. So it's very dangerous in terms of health. It could kill you. Uh, in Iran, for instance, more than 500 people died uh, because they con- consume uh, methanol because, you know, rumor has it, people were sharing about it, uh, saying that, you know, drinking methanol uh, would help uh, them from getting COVID-19 and also would help cure COVID-19. So more than 500 people died uh, and lots more, more, many people uh, were hospitalized. So these are uh, effects uh, of, uh, you know, uh, just practicing something which has not been fact-checked, uh, which has not been checked for credibility, uh, and, you know, we are not sure if the information is reliable or not. So. It's very dangerous yeah. and it's very harmful. Yeah, <laughs> thank you for thank you for giving this example to us, uh, uh, Miss Sabaria. Because this is really this is not only about misinformation and confuse. Uh. This yeah. actually kills people. Uh. Yeah. I think the people who actually spread this kind of news can must really think, you know, before you do it because it's not only confuse people but it also take people's life. Uh. Yeah. It's yeah. something like a murder, you know, a uh, uh, murder indirectly, you know. So. I, I would just say, uh, please be very responsible. Now, I'm very sad to hear news like this, like 500 people die just because huh. of a fake news which can be prevented. Yes. It is not that they die of the pandemic themselves, you know, the, the COVID themselves, you know, but they die of fake news. This is so un, uh, unjust. Huh. So yeah. I hope that uh, whoever is here can really uh, spread the 
uh, knowledge on don't spread fake news. Uh. So thank you so much, uh, Sabaria, for sharing this. So I will pass some questions to Kay. Uh. Kay, uh, as a young uh, ASEAN people uh, that who is very passionate to do a lot for community. I know your passion uh, from, uh, yeah, I have met you last year, you know. So I'm very uh, impressed with uh, young leaders here. So uh, for this misinformation and disinformation, uh, please tell us your experience in encountering false information online in the context of your work at Deep Tech ASEAN. Yes, thank you for the question, Dr. Yang. Um, just as Ms. Sabaria has mentioned, there is no one-size-fits-all approach to remove myths or disinformation, which is why you know the majority of the digital audience will still, regardless of their background, being an expert, will still be a victim. Me, I can be a victim here. Uh, Ms. Sabaria and can be a victim. Dr. Yang can also be a victim. We can still be encountering fake news at the same time on a daily basis. So how we approach this in uh, Dick Tech ASEAN is like we, uh, this perspective should first be acknowledged as false information knows no global boundaries. And as a consequence, it spreads faster after clicking the share buttons where digital algorithm will outspace human capabilities. So in the context of our work at Dick Tech ASEAN, we noticed this challenge and we realized that our work is not to uh, educate the youths to avoid false information, but to encounter and approach them with real an effective method. So how we do is that we provide a solid groundwork and safe space for the public, mostly the vulnerable youth in rural areas. And we educate in our workshops that false information exists and they will develop, the, uh, they will be uh, developing causations just like it can even cause uh, danger to our lives, right? So we, we try to develop the critical thinking mindset in our curriculum, like, and then we also partner with um, uh, the this organizations, the local organizations. For example, we partner up with in Indonesia, in Mafindo, Indo, Mafindo, Indonesia, and Arte Kabupaten Bandung for our virtual workshop, so that they can also share their experience and how they are fighting uh, hoax news and how we can approach this and take this seriously. So through our services, like we also encourage them to fact check. Okay, because whenever we ask a student in our workshop, they would say, that, oh, we check in Wikipedia. This is information is in Wikipedia. But we try to say that, no, this is not a reliable. This is open source. We try to say that we need to start educating them with the basic uh, information. So like the Wikipedia investor, we had to, you know, avoid these websites. And we further continue building our efforts by understanding the meaning of false information online. So so yeah, we also uh, educate our uh, overcoming misinformation and disinformation online through spreading educated backgrounds in the forms of research articles and also short bit. Maybe it's because youth are interested in short notes, then we do some quizzes. So that's how we try to educate them. Like, so we don't say like, okay, you will not see false information, just skip it. But we try to make them think about this, uh, how they can approach in their daily life, yeah. Mm. So, uh, in your effort to do all these activities uh, to educate people, because I, I think some of us really wanted to really be responsible, but we don't know how. So, it's good that your course and your programs actually give people the insights on how to do it. But in your efforts, do you? Uh, what is the most difficult uh, moment? You know, your difficulties, your challenges that you face. Uh? Sometimes not everyone wants to be trained. I, I'm not sure why. Uh? Or is it lazy or is it what, you know, but what is the challenges for you to actually do your, uh, 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 you know, uh, programs? Sorry. Uh, what is, sorry. Yeah. Can you hear me? Sorry. Oops. Uh, sorry. Yes, yes. Can you hear me? I think, uh, okay. yeah. I think it's the line. Yeah? So uh, what is your challenges? Huh? Maybe you can share, Kay. Yes, uh, because just as we are trying to tackle this critical thinking mindset and the mindsets of youth. So the main challenge is uh, our, as our primary audience is the rural youth and as they have weak tactical and already ethical habits, they are already internalized of habits of using social media. Whenever they see something interesting, it's always like, oh, let's share this fast. Let's share this quick and fast before anybody else shares. So that is something that we we encounter difficulty. The mindset is the very first because uh, we can provide them technical skills, how to use um, 
how to use the digital tools. Yes, they will be eventually be understanding on how to use the tools. Uh, but the mindset is something that we they really difficult because we are already internalized with our like, okay, I've lived for 20 years, like we have been doing this habit for more than 20 years, but we're trying to change this habit in just a few days, or maybe just a few weeks. And that is the real difficult part. So changing the mindset is really difficult part. And um, that's the most difficult thing, like, you know, for them to understand what we are really trying to say, trying to tackle this mindset. So we have to start with, that's why we have to start with like, okay, the basic adequates, for example, how they can search on Google instead of using Facebook to search uh, information. So that's, that's, that's how we have to start with like, we really have to start with the basic things. We cannot assume that, oh, we already know how to do this. So then they will be you know. So we have to do with uh, tackle with empathy and we have to be directing them with empathy whenever we challenge this because what we are trying to tackle here is not the practical skills but more like the ethical and habitual skills that in a, a person have and also another challenge is that um because we're trying to do a digital tool here and just as now even in while we're speaking the connection might uh, drop off any time so the connection problems you know the ASEAN in ASEAN it's still uh it's still no um surprise to us that oh can you hear me sorry the line just dropped you know it's always happening so sometimes it discourages <laughs> the participants so it sometimes it discourages the participants and um like oh we cannot use the internet why bother to try to learn about anything so you know we have to try and encourage that no we have to maximize the out of it the most out of it even for, for just a few seconds we try to tell our success stories in uh, just with the uh, with the accessibility of internet we're still uh, we can do so many things so we have to start with everything we have to start with the basic adequates everything and maybe another challenge is also that uh yeah another challenge is also that sometimes the device errors because most youths in ASEAN is uh, depending on one phone they don't use laptops that much they only have one phone and some of these phones can have technical errors sometimes they cannot assess google or sometimes they have very um the the version is not that updated yet so sometimes we need to tackle with all these so we need to uh, think about whenever we are trying to advocate about digital literacy or media literacy or about hoax news we need to know about the basic people the basic ones that because most of them the vulnerable ones who did not share sometimes like they share the misinformation not with the intent to harm but they just share oh maybe the people want might to know this you know uh, people might want to know this and they want to share this but uh, that is actually wrong so we have to uh, we have to make them think again like double thing again so yeah that those are the main difficulties yeah yeah actually to change the habits huh? It's very yeah. difficult. And then also most of the things is a tips of our fingers and we want it fast, you know. So it's also bounds to our habits to be uh, very lazy yeah? to counter check and to refer back again, you know. So maybe in future, hopefully there will be some apps, you know, very easy to just click on the side of these, uh, you know, platform, uh, whatever platform we are using uh, so that we don't have to go in and search. And I think getting into the internet and do Google search sometimes, not everyone wanted to do that, you know. So uh, that is more on the people who is maybe in the academy, you know, a uh, uh, feel uh, would do uh, to do uh, checking. So um, thank you so much for the sharing. And I already have many questions coming in. So for the first questions, I will give it to uh, Sabaria. What are some ways people can find credible news and information? Is there a way to verify news that people receive via messaging platforms? Uh, this is a, a personal platform so before they decide to spread it to others. So I think the challenge is the uh, groups and, and our own personal platform. Uh, so it's yeah. really challenging. So uh, what do you have to advise? So yes, uh, like you said, Dr. Yang, uh, the challenge is uh, you know, messages that we get on our platforms like uh, WhatsApp and all that. So what are the ways that we can check? Uh, one way is to go, I mean, for Malaysians, we have a website called sebenarnya.my uh, where people are already fact-checking. Um, I mean, it's a government agency, uh, but, you know, they are already doing some fact-check for us. Uh, we also have uh, Bernama's My Check. Uh, that also is a like an also fact checking uh, organization, but it's in alliance with Bernama. Uh, and we have another one, Fact Check Lab. Uh, that's an independent fact checking uh, organization, which also does fact check. So if you feel like you are too lazy to do your own fact checking, what you can do is that you can get in touch with the, with with these three organizations 
uh, first you can search their um, their archives and see if it has already been debunked, uh, uh, or if it have, or if it has not been debunked, what you can do is you can get in touch with them. Uh, and ask them to do the fact checking for you. Otherwise, it's very simple actually to do just a Google search like uh, what Kim said. Google search can be quite uh, uh, effective uh, in uh, looking for uh, whether the information has been debunked because sometimes there are other institutes, uh, other fact checking organizations which has already done this fact checking from overseas and all that. So yeah. Thank you so much uh, for that uh, advice. I hope I hope that um, the key is still, you know, Google check. <laughs> uh, so uh, there's no other way yeah, uh, than uh, using your instinct or, you know, I've been in this life for 40 years, you know, and I'm no. very, you know, all this doesn't work anymore. <laughs> so please do more hard work. And then I, I hope that uh, um, we can also uh, um, do this from the grassroots, uh, uh, not only from, uh, from the youth uh, group, uh, but also from the kids, you know, uh, young, uh, young adult, uh, adults and all that, you know, uh, kids, uh, so that they can start building this kind of habits. Uh. It's all about habits, I think. So uh, the second question I will go to, considering uh, to Kay, uh, Kay, considering that more people are spending more time online, how worrying is fake news, especially among vulnerable, uh, vulnerable groups? Yes. So, um, oh, sorry, sorry. The question is how, how? Okay. Considering that more people are spending more time online, how worrying is fake news? How, how serious is this, sir? Especially among vulnerable groups. Yes, it's uh, very serious. I have to say it's very serious because this information, they just share it. Like, even when we're talking with the vulnerable youths uh, like during our workshops, they provided, thing, they provided things that they think that those are true. But sometimes they already know the answer because of the post on, online. But they are very affected. But even us, for us, like the false information, sometimes we think that, oh, is it true? Sometimes we even have some doubts. Like even for us, those misinformation can doubt. So imagine what could do to those vulnerable youths like, because they have no other access and just like uh, Miss Yang and Sabari has also mentioned just now Google search is the key but there are some devices that cannot use Google and that is the problem like how and even if they can use Google there's the language barrier and there's the language barrier so they cannot easily fact check the information even if they know how to use Google so so the with these language barriers and with this um, uh, Google accessibility going on, it's very serious and sometimes it can cause just like you know Mr. Barry has mentioned earlier, it causes danger to lives. It causes an indirect murder. So it causes like these information like they are circulating around them. They are not knowing that oh uh, okay come on let's share to them. And then sometimes they don't have the internet access as well. One 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 person in that community they only have one device to connect to the internet and that person shares without knowing the consequences and then the whole community will have side effects so the side effect is very much important and like the consequences is you know unimaginable it can cause to danger not just to an individual but to the whole community like you know like oh okay if this is good then let's do this and then like the whole community might be actually affected so it's not just sometimes like misinformation might not cause just a small uh, action to just one individual but also to the whole community for the vulnerable use where they have no proper internet access and uh no proper accessibility so yeah okay uh, uh this is really important also you know i think uh we need uh, government uh, local government support uh, to really uh, uh provide different kinds of language uh, approach uh, because that's what key mentioned uh, because asean is also uh, uh uh consists of so many different languages and dialects you know uh, not only languages, uh, dialect itself, and also cultural difference. Uh, so the challenges is really big. Yeah? Uh, there's a lot to do. But uh, I think this uh, this part of the questions, uh, it's for me. I mean, uh, whenever we already know that we actually posted uh, a wrong information, as a responsible person, what shall we do? I will pose it to both of you. Maybe Sabaria first. Okay, so what should we do? Mm -hmm. uh, we should... Uh, retract our information for me, yeah, uh, and propose the correct information. But the problem is, Dr. Yang, once that it has been published online, even if you retract the information, even if you deleted the information, people are already has already screenshot it. 
they are already sharing it on Twitter and whatever, whatever. So the impact of you trying to correct the information sometimes is not that significant because the false information has spread like wildfire. <laughs> so, so prevention yeah. is more important than try yeah. to cope uh, and try yeah. to find solution after you post it. Uh. So what about Kay? Kay, what do you say? Yeah, the same as Maria because you know it, it really happens to me too. When someone sends me something, I just screenshot it first. <laughs> so the screenshotting comes first before anything else happens. So yeah, but uh, okay. So let's see. Like okay, so Dr. Yang sends the information. So Dr. Yang is someone that we can trust. So okay, so at first, at least this is someone that we can trust. But it doesn't mean the content that she shares is really trustable. So sometimes, like oh, okay. <laughs> I have, I have a few times posted a wrong information, no? And then I get older, you know, then I apologize and retract. But as what somebody I mentioned, it's too late, you know? <laughs> yes, yes, that's true. You know, we all, I think we've all somehow sometimes share those information because we want our friends to know. But unintentionally, sometimes we become the victims of the misinformation and disinformation. So whenever someone sends you something, like maybe we can first try to see if it's really uh, go happening or maybe at the first thing, just as we say, if we can use Google, let's Google first. And then if not, like, let's try to see if some any news media have already posted about it or if any, uh, because the fact check may be already uh, going, the fact checking organizations might already be working on, but sometimes it might not be, it might still need take some time. So like, okay, when Dr. Yang shares me something and if it's not confirmed yet, okay, maybe Dr. Yang, let's wait for a while if this is confirmed, maybe you cannot share this anyway. We don't know what is that we can, we might have to see it to this. Don't share this to anyone yet. Like if you have shared, maybe you should share uh, this with, you know, saying, okay, this is not confirmed yet. So, you know, don't, don't be uh, oh, saying yes, this is confirmed. Uh, just wait, yeah. just wait for a just while wait, like, just wait for a while and try to see you know if there's nothing confirmed yet and only when it's confirmed yeah let, it's safe and sound let's go yeah. with this yeah I, I mean this technique is very good and okay because i think that sometimes we are just so excited that we just click and share but actually wait for a while is actually very good but as what sabaria mentioned earlier you know people want to be the first one you know yes <laughs> the scoop, you know to get the scoop you know i'm the first one to uh, you know, give you the news huh? uh so Okay, so now I have one um, uh, note uh, from questions and views that requested from uh, uh, Somri Malaysia, Dr. Siva and, and uh, Nadan, uh, Senior PR and Youth Ambassador for Partnership <laughs> of uh, Semyo and uh, Sika. So uh, he mentioned that uh, maybe we may touch on related issues later, just to share my observation on the rate of young person able to adopt and adopt digital literacy may provide opportunity to go into unwanted portals like the deep web or dark web. Mm -hmm. So um, do you have uh, some advice, uh, speakers, uh, both speakers, on how the ethics of these issues uh, revolve? Yeah. Uh, may I just uh, uh, co uh, confirm again? Uh, uh, it's just the, uh, the, rate of the, uh, the rate of young person able to adapt and adopt uh, digital literacy may provide opportunity for them to go into unwanted portals like the deep web or dark web. So this has got to do with their ethic, ethical, uh, you know, what they want in their life, you know, like what Sabari mentioned, sometimes it's for money. You know? So what is your view on this? You know, like when we give them the, the, the methods, you know, the know-how, you know, then they use it wrongly. So what is your, uh, uh, what is your view on this? Hmm. So, okay, so um, to be honest, I think it is very good to empower young people with knowledge. It's good for them to know about the dark web, what is in the dark web, uh, and etc. Uh, because uh, I think it's, uh, you know, doing wrong things or harmful things is not necessarily just on the dark web. It can happen anywhere. Uh, and everywhere. Uh, it could be in a form of a WhatsApp as well. It could be in a form of, uh, you know, hate speech on uh, Twitter uh, and etc. So ethics uh, for me is not just uh, when you are in a dark web, but it's for overall media and digital media usage. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, ethics is something that's ingrained in yourself. So like Dr. Yang said, it is something that we must inculcate since young 
they must know, you know, we, we must expose them to their wrongs and rights. We cannot stop them, to be honest, uh, because I believe it's better for us to tell them that it's a dark web rather than them finding it out themselves uh, and then exploring and doing, you know, harmful stuff and all that. So it's better that they are exposed uh, to all this. Uh, so again, yeah, so ethics is something that's ingrained. So I, I believe it's also parents, <laughs> grandparents, family, sisters, brothers. We are all responsible actually for our children, uh, for our, you know, uh, my nieces and nephews and all that. Uh, yeah. it's, it's, it's not something that I believe law itself can overcome. Uh, yeah. It's, yeah, it's a multi-pronged approach. Uh, yeah. yeah. I agree. I think it's a barrier. How about Kay? Yeah? Kay, what do you have yes. to say before we close yes. the session? Yeah, I agree with what Mr. Barrier has mentioned. Like, it's all, if, when it comes down to, you know, digital literacy or anything else in the world, like maybe even, you know, knowing about the drugs, you know, okay, so people, you know, we know about the drugs, maybe they know how to smoke, but it doesn't mean that knowing about it means that will be enabling them to give to two white opportunity because wherever we go, whatever we do, there will still be opportunities to bad things, even without knowing about deep web so or dark web so maybe sometimes it's better to know about them and what's the content in it what's available on it but the thing is we need to encourage like okay organizations or any even youth like we need to and also this is something that we need to integrate in the education itself in our countries as well because sometimes like in our education system sometimes we do like you know parent learning systems and then sometimes like you know it's not working like so that's what we have to integrate like the critical thinking the ethical because like, you know it has been integrated and internalized for so long so it's very hard to um, remove it so once since young we need to uh, let them know that okay these are these are here and they need to understand like how to approach them even if they know, it doesn't mean that they need to do there or, you know, but maybe from deep web, they can see like, oh, something is happening going on there. Maybe they can even share the share the things that are going into the outside world to, to those who cannot use it. So after all, like, you know, it's all about the ethics and habits when it comes down to skill. Like no matter how skillful we are, like we are, yes, that's true that we're more capable of doing more bad things, but it doesn't mean that necessarily we have to do it. So it's knowing is good, but it means that we have to apply the knowledge uh, well and smartly so that's how we have to approach them mm, thank you so much i think the ethical things are same to our real life like, not only in the virtual yeah? because it all brought boiled down to when uh, how we are brought up uh, the ethicals our values that we hold uh? so these are beyond the uh legal and 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 we can't control uh? but it has to be back to their families how they are brought out you know whether they are given the uh, good good uh, foundation uh, to be the responsible people so thank you so much, uh, Sabaria and Kay, uh, for your uh, grateful and knowledge sharing here. And I hope that the uh, audience has already learned something from you uh, and are uh, able to differentiate between misinformation, disinformation, and the intention. Uh. Thank you so much. And then, uh, so now uh, we are coming to the uh, second uh, panel. But before we move to the second topics of roundtable discussion, let us hear from His Excellency Ambassador Yip San Nam, Permanent Rep Representative of Kingdom of Cambodia to ASEAN, and Alia Nur Sabrina, Miss Indonesia 2018, on how we can tackle misinformation and disinformation. Thank you. The four IRs has brought about most spikes and challenges. Those challenges include online misinformation and disinformation. With this context, the critical thinking is very important. We need a disciplined process of constitutionalizing, applying, and evaluating news or information that we have received, as well as verifying the source and location of online information to counter those threats. We also have to be able to analyze and define the news properly through building our critical thinking and adapting ourselves to the evolving digital environment and technological advancements. In fighting against the spread of fake news and combating disinformation and misinformation, it can be done, among others, through first promoting digital literacy, second, developing digital government policy frameworks, and developing cyber crime law and related regulations, third, strengthening regional capacity in addressing 
cyber security threat and the last developing digital data governance framework to facilitate the cross-border data flow. I think fake news or hoax can definitely trigger public unrest, especially if the fake news are written in a very hyperbolic way or are closely related to a very famous public figure. The way that hoax can cause distrust and shock is quite worrying. In terms of how it affects ASEAN, however, then the concern should be about questioning what if the hoax relates to ASEAN countries and therefore triggers major distrust between ASEAN citizens and between neighboring countries. Because if that happens, then the people in ASEAN cannot live in harmony. What can we do to stop the spread of online hoax and fake news? First of all, we should take our time to process and really understand the information that we receive. That means that we shouldn't be too reactive if we see any controversies, like proceeding to post about those news right away, if we are not sure yet that the news are credible or not. Secondly, we must read the news from many official sources such as official government documents, official news channel websites, and other official websites, and so on. Then we should also be proactive to state whether the news we receive are fake or true by providing the credible proof when we can find it. Lastly, for the people who are active as professional writers and journalists, then they should practice thorough background checks about the sources of news before continue writing, publishing, and making public statements. Thank you. Uh, welcome back, everyone, to the second roundtable discussion. In this session, we will discuss about the importance of building digital literacy to protect ourselves against misleading and harmful content online. So the first session, we already talked about what is this, but the second session will tell you how to do it and also what we need for us to be able to do it. So to, to start the discussion, let us hear from His Excellency Wilfredo E. Cabral, Chair of ASEAN Somet, uh, Somet how the Philippines introduced media and information literacy in their school curriculum. Yes, Excellencies, good morning. The Philippines is among the first countries to make media and information literacy part of its senior high school curriculum, specifically the first country to do so in Asia. Discussions on adding this to the curriculum started way back in 2013 alongside the discussion of the K-12 program. The Department of Education recognizes that learners tend to be media literate online before learning ethics and responsibility and how to use technology. Hence, there is a need to deal with the new challenges the internet has created. Media and information literacy is among the core subjects in the K-12 basic education curriculum in the senior high school of the department, specifically under the communication learning area for senior high school, grade 11 or 12, and with one semester allocation. The MIL curriculum guide for teachers on this core subject is also provided by the Department of Education through its accessible learning portal. The course introduces the learners to basic understanding of media and information as channels of communications and tools for development of individuals and societies. It also aims to develop students to be creative and critical thinkers, as well as responsible users and competent producers of media and information. The department believes that media and information literate learners have improved the quality of life greater political participation in society, better economic opportunities, improved learning environment, and more cohesive social units. Digital literacy is also anchored on media and information literacy, the ways people plan, develop, implement, and communicate ideas and knowledge had been transformed as computers 
the internet, the social media, and the smart mobile devices have become increasingly pervasive. Reading literacy is another aspect to be considered in addressing concerns on media and information literacy. The department has been implementing the Brigada of Basa, which is a nationwide initiative that aims to educate every Filipino about the value of reading and is, and is in line with the celebration of the National Reading Month. As for partnerships, the National Council of Children, Television, or the NCCT has been holding seminar workshops in media literacy integration in the K-12 curriculum. The UP College of Mass Communication, Office of Extension and External Relations also holds a crash course on media literacy for community public school teachers. A declining performance in reading can be identified as a challenge faced by education sector in the Philippines the Department of Education continues to prioritize and promote reading literacy through its programs and initiatives as this fosters critical thinking skills of learners. There are three categories of challenges related to MIL. Curriculum, knowledge of the curriculum, the teacher's competency, and meeting the requirements of the curriculum guide. There is a need for teachers identities as digital educators and how their attitudes toward mass media, digital culture, and social media influence their motivations as teachers to be further established. There may be difficulties in profiling of MIL teachers in the country, particularly assessing who can teach MIL, beyond assessing expertise, experience, and educational background, using proper assessment tools on teachers' competencies are also being looked into, specifically those recommended by UNESCO. Moreover, the curriculum guide for this core subject must be received, revisited or updated from time to time to ensure its alignment with the prescribed framework of UNESCO. An essential recommendation for teaching MIL is that Teachers see it not as a form of protection, but as an opportunity for preparing students for their roles as citizens and consumers and effective participation in democratic discourse. Teaching MIL should engage students in critical analysis, production, and dialogue rather than a process where the teachers control the outcome in interpretation. Teachers must encourage students to be critical when using online platforms and encountering different kinds of information. There must be also a conscious effort to promote that online saf safety of young learners is as important as their physical safety through age appropriate and contextualized lessons, which helps them to appreciate the internet as a safe an enjoyable platform for learning. From a non-regulatory perspective, parents are urged to be more mindful and attentive to the digital activities of their children, and they contribute to equipping learners with the proper competencies that enable them to discern online issues, threats, and information authenticity. With these excellencies, I would like to thank you for your kind attention. And I also congratulate the organizer for the successful conduct of this event. Maraming salamat at magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Uh, thank you, His Excellency, uh, Mr. Wilfredo for the great sharing. So we are coming into our second and last session of today's discussion. We have very good and experienced experts here with us. Let me introduce our first panel is His Excellency Dr. Sok Prasit, Somri Chairperson of Cambodia, Secretary of State Ministry of Information, Cambodia. Welcome to this forum. And our second uh, panel is uh, Ms. Santi Indra Astuti, Presidium of Masyarakat Anti-Fitna 
Indonesia, Mafindo. And third, the last but not least, uh, our good friend, uh, Miss Tenzin Norbu, Director of Government Affairs and Public Policy Google. Good to see you again, Miss Tenzin. Uh, so thank you very much for your time and for joining us since this morning. Uh, I saw all of you is already there. So this is the continuation of our discussion. Uh, so the first uh, discussion, I will do it with uh, His Excellency Dr. Saab Prasid. Uh, Dr. Saab, are there significant differences between how younger and older generation appreciate digital information now? And why? Why is there a difference? The floor is yours, Dr. Sok. Thank you very much, Madam Yang. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you and uh, really appreciate thanks for roundtable discussion today. And hello, everyone that we join uh, our uh, special discussion today also. I'm really interact, uh, interesting about that, uh, the title of the Asian Digital uh, Literacy Forums today. And then thank you very much for your question for the young and the old people that are involved with the, about the information that uh, really, it's not just only like uh, uh, information, it's not only Cambodian or only Asian right now, it's the, in the global information. Uh, really very important and then, but really uh, some misunderstanding a lot that involve about uh, spread of information right now. Uh, just in case that, uh, I, I believe that you understand a lot about that uh, during that the COVID-19 that pandemic uh, in the Asian or in the region or the, in the global right now, that the misunderstanding and misinformation a lot that uh, they are provide and the super, uh, 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 public uh, and posting the information like the fake news uh, information to uh, 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 combating the fake news and then to young generation or to the older people for scary something like that that the problem in Cambodia right now but uh, in fact I, I, I would like to turn uh, a little bit that uh, why why they try to to uh, to uh, posting about some uh, information like the disinformation, misinformation, because the based on the information is very, uh, it's not very small. Uh, when you think about the information, you imagine that about the information, how the big you are. Just only one minute right now is the really uh, uh, faster digitalization and a very, uh, uh, very uh, uh, potential information uh, through by the internet uh, global right now. So the best on of the digital platform, we have the unless, unless the uh, uh, innovative the journalists, the journalists uh, will be uh, give us to uh, like uh, the, the, the feel bad, even that the, they, they, they from the another group or uh, example like the opponent uh, opponent uh, group for the the, the politics uh, way they give us to like uh, the like the critical uh, media and uh, some uh, like uh, uh, miss uh, to 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 posting some uh, uh, information about bad our government example like that and young generation in Cambodia I I, I take the example like young young generation in Cambodia that right now in fact that they just only uh, uh, saw uh, uh, play the Facebook, play the TikTok, uh, play the many social media in the, in the world right now that they, they make they, them understand more about like uh, the bad way. It's not uh, they more understanding the real situation in Cambodia or, us, or in the global right now. Even those that the disinformation and uh, and uh, hoaxes about the information, uh, they are really, really fear uh, to to this, uh, this distribution the information to the young generation and all people more understanding about our activities, especially about that our government, our ministry, our our social and community that they have been done a lot about be, between for to to combating the information. Even that about the coronavirus in Cambodia, uh, about the, the opponents, 
uh, group uh, from the overseas, they uh, really announced about the bad information for our kingdom of Cambodia uh, 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 through by the, the social media uh, for, the, for fighting our, our governments, uh, for fighting our the private sector, uh, for to to make uh, to make the uh, government down for mass media or from the overseas. Uh, maybe I can brief you some information about uh, in in the COVID nineteen in Cambodia the pandemic that the broke in, uh, bro broke out uh, during two thousand nineteen and then spread around in the Cambodia or in the world in particularly the Cambodia discovery the first case in the pandemic, but. Uh, the, the, the pandemic is the start uh, uh, from move on a little bit and a little bit and then more and more in Cambodia. But Cambodia it have a good potential and good strategy led by the head of the government of Kingdom of Cambodia. So why the young generation, why the oldest people in Cambodia? Uh, right now I can I, I, I would say that uh, the, the more the more people in Cambodia more understanding a lot than uh, than uh, than before because right now our our media in Cambodia or in region I mean that in Asian also we are like to uh, to mobilization and exchange some information uh, a lot that uh, we more understanding more and then young generation right now they are news more than about the uh, uh, more than uh, more than technical, and then in uh, through by the technology, through by the broadcasting, through by the the, the internet, they, they more understand well. Then, but we need to understand that if the young generation or the older the people more understanding, but we are the Ministry of Information under the uh, uh, under the Kingdom of Cambodia, we are to provide them to more the real information to protect about the fake news because the misunderstanding or misinformation or disinformation is really very, really versed to, to destroy to our government or our social and community in Cambodia. Even that the pandemic, that situation is going to worse, uh, it's really a little bit bad. I, I would like to take this opportunity to raise the in the in sentence uh, which are related to uh, the fail new and uh, allegation uh, for information consideration as below follow the being the opponent uh, propagate that uh, the COVID-19 disease in Cambodia. But that way is just only the political game. The royal government, the kingdom of Cambodia, they try to protect us well. They, they send all the real information about how to if vaccinate it, how to people get the vaccine. We, we really appreciate from the, among all the country around the world, especially for China, uh, Europe, uh, USA, uh, another, 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 another friend from uh, another uh, the country friend that they donation uh, the, the, the vaccine to Cambodia to protect Cam the, the people of Cambodia. So right yeah, now Scott, we are uh, just uh, just to, uh, sorry for the in, uh, intervention. Uh. Uh, so uh, I just want to know that uh, can you just wrap it up on, on this uh, plan uh, for Cambodia side is that you have same programs for young generation and old generation or it's a separate programs for these uh, uh, to curb this uh, misinformation issues? Yes. I, 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 I just only breathe and then uh, I, I will be turned back to the about the young generation and the, the, the old generation for uh, to uh, uh, why the, the, they, 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 they more understanding uh, about the fake news than the, uh, the true news. The, 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 the news really important. I just only take some example like the COVID-19. The problem is not in Cambodia. The problem is around the world. And then they try to, to avoid and then try to uh, not uh, pretend it, uh, that uh, uh, that is not the real problem. But I, 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 would, me, I would like to uh, explain that the fake news, you need to give the real news, the true news, to protect, to uh, protect about the true information. Because if you give the, if you will 
spreading the misinformation to around the world or global. The, the misinformation will be sharing all to the young generation, but they will be, they will be misunderstanding what the real information, real activity. So the, our government policy or even our ministry policy, we have the really, really policy that uh, to uh, provide them to understand the real information uh, by our ministry. This is that the, that the key pers that the key note that I want to give you all because it's yeah. not just only in Cambodia, in Malaysia, in Philippines, everywhere yeah. that yeah. got a lot of big problem about involving uh, fake. Yes, 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 agree with that, Doctor So. This is really a, a global issue, sir. Not only yes. in Cambodia, and then uh, also like the way how Cambodia doing uh, is to give to counter it with the real news. Uh. Yeah. So this is actually your strategy, uh, which is uh, uh, quite impactful uh, for your community i think yeah so i think every government has a different types of way uh, to actually uh, implement some programs and tools that uh, prepare for their people so thank you dr so and i uh, will come back to you later with the questions uh, dr so so for now we go for santi uh, uh miss santi uh, give us a brief overview of your accomplishments of mafindo in fact checking fighting yeah, on misinformation and disinformation Okay, thank you very much. Uh, greetings from Indonesia, Dr. Yang and uh, uh, Your Excellency, Dr. Sok and Mr. Uh, and Mrs. Tanzin. So, uh, speaking about uh, how Mafindo accomplishment during uh, the last three years, yes, we barely found it about uh, in 2017. Uh, I think first of all is about uh, the first accomplishment is how we can build awareness on misinformation among the people. Mafindo was established in January 2017 following a series of campaigns in five cities in Indonesia in a week. This campaign has successfully shaken the people and built awareness about uh, misinformation and disinformation in the country. Soon after that, Indonesia is going frenzy with similar movements that denounce hoaxes. Hoaxes is the popular term for misinformation and disinformation in Indonesia and everybody just declared to fight against it. I think that is the first accomplishment and the foundation of all Mafindo's achievement. So the second accomplishment is in the area of fact-checking itself. We begin fact-checking with merely a conversation on Facebook uh, discussing the matter when misinformation comes up. Uh, we share the actual facts. Later on, people chime in and it became a regular online gathering. More and more misinformation are reported, discussed, and then being debunked. We learn how to investigate, uh, clarify, debunk uh, through the help of the crowd. And soon it came from everywhere, from partners, from uh, 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 other people who sympathize with our movement, including aid from professional organization, which is uh, solely focusing on fact checking. So we established then a committee of fact checkers who do their tests professionally. Certified by uh, IFCN, Mafindo now set standards uh, and became a benchmark of fact checking in the country. With this achievement, Mafindo helps other organizations, including mass media, to achieve similar standards. The third achievement is our community the engagement, our outreach is millions. Our beneficiaries out there is millions. We manage to reach people from different segments of the society. They are housewives, uh, young people, school children, teachers, is even healthcare workers in this situation. Clerics, businessmen, politicians, civil society affairs, we remain independent. We don't receive any, fund, any funds from the government. That's our core principles, but we are working hand in hand in collaboration with government, society, communi uh, community, organization, mass media to solve the problem. I think the fourth accomplishment is on tools, facilities, and other supporting materials. We don't have money, but of course, others made it to support us in developing websites, upgrading the content, producing uh, fact-checking apps, the training materials in the form of books, modules, poster, flyers, even videos. Right now, as an organization, uh, Mafindo has grown to a large number of community members uh, spread in 23 cities of Indonesia. Uh, today, more than 1,000 uh, registered as a member uh, officially, uh, half of it actively participated in Mafindo's event. Of course, this is not enough. 
because fighting misinformation needs everyone to be involved. But I think that is uh, uh, perhaps answering your question about uh, our accomplishment so far. Thank you so much, uh, Ibu Santi, yeah? because this is really, uh, I like what you mentioned, you know, you have these hoaxes and debunk. So this town terms been used in Indonesia. So I think that uh, for, in the process of trying to do this alone, uh, I, I really respect your initiative uh, to uh, just do it without uh, thinking uh, about you know money and all that you know this is really something that uh, many organizations has to follow steps huh? i mean uh, because this kind of issue uh, needs more parties to be involved so later we will talk about how we can do partnerships huh? so uh, when you do the, your programs uh, what is the significant uh, what is the main challenges that you face and how you counter it uh, with the challenges Wow, <laughs> actually, this is a very tough question because first of all, the dynamics of the field situations is so challenging. Uh, misinformation occurred in every instance, in uh, every course of life. We saw an upsurge of hoaxes during the presidential and local election. Also during disaster, we detect a spike of misinformation circulated. During this pandemic, infodemic also attack us, uh, all of us, and form a misinformation disorder. We deal with misinformation nearly in all aspects of life, and the challenge is getting bigger because one, the technology is uh, human friendly. Uh, it is more sophisticated, of course, but uh, it is more friendly for uh, lay people to use. And also it gives opportunity for others to produce a more sophisticated hoax. Meanwhile, we deal with people with low level of digital literacy. So it is very complex what we, uh, what we uh, face right now. Uh, the second challenge is coming from the channel of distribution. WhatsApp and other similar apps are categorized as dark social and it is very popular in Indonesia. Lots of misinformation occurred bred and large amplified because we did uh, but we didn't ha have access to the group so there are also challenges that came from uh, that uh, channel of distribution uh, chat uh, 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 chat application another challenge coming from the platform itself as a third party fact checkers our posting to clarify this information are sometimes also labeled as misinformation due to the algorithms i think and it taken down <laughs> we can solve the problem but it takes time and when the situation is restored the misinformation has sp uh, spread faster than before <laughs> so this is uh, really the challenge for us yeah this is really uh, this is really some things that difficult yeah because uh, even your effort has been uh, removed yeah uh -huh. <laughs> yes, I, that's right. I, yeah, I just hope that the platform will be more sensitive uh, towards the uh, organizations, uh, uh, certified organizations. Uh. Maybe that can be uh, built in the future uh, so that the platform is aware, you know, this is not a hoax uh, or, or uh, uh, platform uh, so that you can do your jobs easily. Yeah? Because it's already is difficult, but then you add on to another difficulties. Uh. So thank you for your sharing. And I just want to, uh, before I move to my last uh, panel questions, uh, which is uh, Ms. Tenzing Norbu, I want to remind all the participants and audience to post your questions. You can post it now. Uh, then we will collect your questions and uh, share with our uh, panel uh, today. Yeah? So please feel free yeah, to post your questions. So now I will move to our last uh, expert today to uh, do some discussion. Yeah? So Ms. Tenzing, uh, what is the role of the corporate or private sector in combating uh, misinformation and disinformation? First of all, thank you very much for having me here today. And it's wonderful to see, uh, you know, partners like Mafindo, uh, you know, who are the uh, independent fact uh, checkers. Uh, clearly, it's all about partnerships and the private sector work, needs to work extremely closely with academia, with governments, with independent fact checkers, with researchers and with users in order to combat the problem of uh, misinformation, disinformation. Google, for, you know, our real mission is to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. And disinformation per se runs counter to that mission and to our core business interests. 
And that's why we invest extremely heavily to counter efforts that seek to deceive, harm, or take advantage of users and to curb the spread of low quality information on our services. We admit that there is no silver bullet a solution to this. So we use a multi-pronged approach to tackle issues across our products and services. So for example, first we make quality count in our ranking systems. We design our ranking systems uh, so that they elevate trustworthy information and reduce the spread of low quality content across our services. Just as an example, and this was raised in the earlier panel on Google search, for example, we provide significant weight to authority as opposed to relevance in response to searches that are made by our users, particularly when it comes to things like health, livelihoods, or civic engagement. And this also includes news related searches. We really double down on our efforts, particularly in times of crisis, as you know, the last 18, 20 months of the pandemic have shown, and also during times of breaking news, because these are the times when bad actors can take advantage uh, of the situation on the ground. The second area is that private sector can work on, and we do a lot of this in Google, is countering malicious actors and protecting our users. So we have teams across the world who work 24 seven, 365 days in a year to stop malicious actors from abusing our platforms and to protect our users from harmful misinformation. So uh, in order to counter these disinformation campaigns, we have multiple internal teams that identify malicious actors wherever they may originate from. We disable their accounts and share this threat information with companies and law enforcement officials so that you know, uh, such type of activities can be identified and stopped. We also develop uh, and enforce policies to clamp down on malicious behavior and certain types of very harmful misinformation. So for example, on YouTube, on our YouTube and ads policies, we prohibit deceptive manipulated media or information about things like voting procedures, candidate eligibility, things that really contradict official government information and records. YouTube also prohibits content that targets an individual or group with conspiracy theories that have been used to justify real world violence. And you will see this, uh, you know, on and on. This is, and we've been improving our work on this. And the work that we do is reported on a very regular basis. So we have the YouTube Community Guidelines Enforcement Transparency Report. I hope that all of you can access it. This details the actions that we have taken with regard to content on YouTube on a quarter by quarter basis. Annually, we also produce something called publish the Ad Safety Report, which outlines the actions that we take to protect the integrity of our advertising products. So that's the second block of work. The third really is, you know, comes back to the whole issue on empowering users with context, with training, as well as with the feedback tools that can help them spot and provide feedback on any type of disinformation online. So we, uh, for example, provide context to users at the time when it matters most. Uh, and I think this is something, you know, that will uh, speak to the question that was raised by Wong in the earlier session. Uh, from the Malaysia Philippines Tech Alliance. So for example, on Google News, in addition to fact checks, our full coverage function, we actually have an information function, a little uh, you know, thing that they can uh, click on. It provides more context to users on whether or not an article, you know, basically on the article that they're reading or the story that they're following. Similarly on search, we have knowledge panels that help users understand more about the subject of their queries. So we make it easy to spot fact checks directly in these search results. And of course, we work with media literacy experts to help news consumers, especially youth. And we've done this significantly across Southeast Asia to get a better understanding of the online news landscape and how to spot disinformation. As Google and as a private company that's responsible, we continue to stay vigilant on emerging threats and respond to new developments. And we 
are doubling down and continue to do so on our work against harmful misinformation during this COVID-19 pandemic. And we also work very hard to protect the integrity of elections across the world. I'll stop there for now. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Tenzing, Ms. Tenzing. I think uh, because of the time also, uh, we're very sorry that we can't really uh, take more questions. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, before I end these sessions, maybe I give like uh, each of you uh, one uh, last uh, say, uh, a note uh, to say something to curb, uh, for the uh, good suggestions uh, for people to take back the key points. Uh. Maybe I start with Dr. So first. Dr. So, you have any advice to or the audience uh, on how or about this uh, literacy? Yeah, digital literacy. Yeah. Again, for Dr. Yeah. And then thank you for uh, both of speaker that have been uh, uh, presentation involved uh, really uh, good topics and then mention about uh, our uh, discussion uh, on the topic of the fake news uh, with the uh, digital literacy today. I just have uh, give a little bit of comment that uh, <clears throat> by my own uh, suggestion that disinformation or misinformation and uh, hoaxes there are popularly popularly refer as the fake news. We have the high commitment to give the true information to destroy the fake news. Because when we take over the true information to cover the fake news, the fake news will be disappear uh, no more on the, 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 the platform. So I have the one word that read the R E A D I. That is a really the good meaningful for uh, you uh, uh, to, 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 to use for about uh, uh, cover the, the uh, disinformation of misinformation. Uh, the first all mean that uh, responsibility. E mean that impasse. Impa, impa A mean that the uh, Asian uh, city and this descent discernment and I integrity. That is the the the, the five 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 uh, five uh, five role that is the really my suggestion to uh, yeah. thank to you so much Dr. So eh? so we hope that everybody gets the tips uh, read read here. Yeah? Ready, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Inter so maybe integrity. Yeah. Yeah. Integrity. Yes. Yeah. So uh, thank you so much for the tips. I think everyone is remembering what you mentioned. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. So thank how you about much, uh, yeah, Ibu Santi? Do you have anything to say? Okay. Uh, uh, thank you so much. So uh, I think this is the forum where we can reach out uh, young people everywhere. Uh, not just in Indonesia, but also in ASEAN Forum. So we invite uh, Asian youth to be hoaxbuster, participate in our program, let's collaborate. We also aim to empowering the society. How, how to participate? Yes. How to uh, participate? They yes. want to join you. Okay. First of all, uh, just uh, being a hoaxbuster in each environment, the closest environment, in the family, uh, help the elderly to tackling uh, and to identify the misinformation. After that, uh, I think young people have also the power to collaborate. It is become their norm to gathering and also to spread out the positive messages about this. Uh, it's relatively easy for young people actually with their digital skills to mastering the art of uh, tackling this mis misinformation. But sometimes doing it alone is not enough. So let's collaborate each other, became a hoaxbuster. Yeah. And it's really cool to be a hoaxbuster than just, uh, uh, just uh, yeah, uh, getting angry <laughs> with that information. <laughs> yeah, true. Thank you so well, much. And then yeah. uh, last, uh, we will go to Tenzing. Any, any advice? Yes, definitely. In addition to becoming hoaxbusters, like uh, Uwisanti talked about, I think that there are really a lot of tools and sites that are available 
to you uh, to help fight misinformation. So please visit Google News Lab. There's also First Draft, Reality Check, Check Factor, and even Marfindor who has a site. So please use them. But I would like to leave, uh, you know, five, uh, you know, specific uh, tips with you. Think about sheep before you share. S is for source. Can you trust the source from which you're getting information? H is for history. Is it a reputable source? Do they have adequate history? E is for evidence. Is there enough evidence? E, again, is for emotion. Is the emotion in that particular message inflammatory? And finally, P, pictures. Is it portraying the right message? Each of you have a good gut feeling. Please use sheep and your gut feeling to decide whether or not something is misinformation, disinformation, and please don't share it if it is. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Tenzing. And I hope everyone take back whatever has been uh, shared, uh, ship, uh, and then also on uh, a hot buster. Eh? So it's very cool. Eh? I think it reminds me of Ghostbuster. <laughs> So uh, thank you so much, uh, all our speakers, uh, for all your great sharing today. I hope that uh, we have actually come to the end of today's uh, two sessions of discussion. And I hope that you have already learned and gained some knowledge. And thank you so much for all your time. And to end this session, uh, please allow me to invite Her Excellency Ambassador Kotli Peng, Permanent Representative of the Republic of Singapore to ASEAN, and Angelo Denico Fabro, ASEAN Foundation's operation in interns to share us their views about the importance of promoting digital literacy skills. And after this, I will pass back to Theo, our MC. And I'll see you in our next program. Thank you. We live in an age where information is just a click away, wherever we are, whenever we are, and often for little to no cost, as long as we have access to the internet. So not only has it become easier to access information, it has also become easier for anyone to publish an article or post an opinion on the web that could be read by anyone around the globe. Why then is critical thinking important? First, we are confronted by a world where the line between opinion and fact is becoming increasingly blurred. This was highlighted by a RAND study in 2019, which analysed content from newspapers, television and online media outlets over a span of 28 years. Among other findings, the study highlighted that there has been an increasing disagreement about facts and analytical interpretations of facts and data, an increase in the relative volume of opinion and personal experience over fact, and declining trust in formally respected sources of factual information. Second, critical thinking serves as a useful counterbalance to the emotional responses that misinformation and disinformation seek to evoke. I think all of us have experienced firsthand during the COVID-19 pandemic Situations where panic and fear have proved uh, fertile ground for fake news to spread almost as rapidly, if not faster, than the virus itself. We cannot underestimate the scale of this problem. In May this year, Facebook said that it had removed 18 million pieces of misinformation related to COVID-19 from Facebook and Instagram since the start of the pandemic. And this really is just the tip of the iceberg. In Singapore's context, we are developing our students' critical thinking skills as part of their 21st century competencies and digital literature development through the national uh, education curriculum. So through this, students learn how to assess information's credibility, accuracy and relevance as part of their thinking processes to facilitate evidence-based sound reasoning and decision-making. I'm glad that ASEAN Foundation and Google have organised this roundtable discussion and I look forward to a robust exchange of views. 
we, the youth of ASEAN, as digital natives, have information at the tip of our fingers. What we like, post, retweet, share, all of them have very big consequences if enough of us do the same. The importance, therefore, of thinking critically as we consume online information cannot be underestimated. It is important to think critically, discern the credibility, and always think of the consequences before sharing online information. As the future drivers of change in ASEAN, let's do our part in being digitally literate. Thank you, Ambassador Li Peng and Angelo, for sharing us your insight. I would also like to thank Dr. Yang for moderating the discussion. And thank you to all six panelists for sharing your wisdom and knowledge for all of us today. I believe we are all have gained a valuable insight on the topic of misinformation and disinformation today. Now, we will officially begin the launching of the Digital Literacy 101 comic. Digital Literacy 101 is a slice of life short comic educating about media and information literacy, sharing tips on how to spot and counter misinformation and disinformation. To give a better glimpse about the comic, we will now see a short video highlighting the concept of the comic. Wow, what an interesting and insightful comic as you can see from the ins uh, insightful video we just watched. I definitely can't wait to read it soon and I'm sure you are all wondering, how can we access the comic? I'm glad to inform you that this comic can be downloaded for free at bit.ly slash ASEAN Declate 101. So please download the comic and share it to your friends, families, and networks as one of the many little steps we all can do to combat misinformation and disinformation starting from our circle. I think it will be nice to hear some insight from some people working behind the scene to produce this comic and also to hear from the representative of our young people. We will hear from Mr. Rian Raharjo, Head of Public Affairs at Google Southeast Asia, Mr. Anthony Octaviano, Head of Communication at ASEAN Foundation, and our youth representative, Marwa Zanira. Let's start with Mr. Ryan. Do you have any comments for the comic, Mr. Ryan? Thank you so much, uh, Bernard. Um, I think listening to the previous discussion, um, all of us, I think we are all agree that in today's complex environment, uh, we must all learn how to identify the source of information, right? And also how to verify it. And most important thing, become our own fact checkers uh, to ensure that the information that we see is trustworthy. And this is the key reason why uh, we decided to develop this uh, short comic. Um, I really hope that um, through this comic, it can help uh, people, in particular youth and elderly in Southeast Asia, to better understand what misinformation is, where it comes from, and how important uh, facts are in this uh, digitized age. Um, so we are uh, very pleased to work uh, with the ASEAN Foundation and all the partners to help strengthen people's critical thinking uh, through this asset, because at the end of the day, uh, we all need to work together uh, to do our part in combating the spread of misinformation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ryan. And let's proceed with Mr. Anthony and Marwa. If you have anything to add for what Mr. Ryan already shared for us today as well. Uh, yeah, I just want to echo what uh, Ryan has said. Uh, I think we are very happy to be able to share the Digital Literacy 101 comic with all of you today uh, in an era where uh, fake can easily be disguised as fact. Having critical thinking is now more important than ever. Uh, I hope that the short comic can help instill uh, the mindset of
Marwa, anything from the youth side about the comic? approach all important points are summed up into this one abbreviation so it makes the readers to easily recall the steps and ways on contributing to this problem thank you marwa and thank you mr ryan and mr anthony as well for sharing your insight about the comic i think from the comment box we all can see that everyone is really excited for the launching of the digital comic that soon we will be able to access as well now, I am delighted to unveil ASEAN Foundation new program in partnership with Google's philanthropic arm, Google.org, called the ASEAN Digital Literacy Program. This program aims to combat hoaxes and fake news in ASEAN by transforming youth, teachers, parents, elderly, government officials, and community leaders into agents of change that detect, counter, and prevent the spread of misinformation and disinformation. Now, let's see the video explaining what is the program all about and also to hear insightful remarks from Ms. Stephanie Davis, Vice President, Google Southeast and South Asia, Dr. Yang Mieng, Executive Director at ASEAN Foundation, and His Excellency Dato Lim Jokhoi, Secretary General of ASEAN. It's an honor to be with you today. My name is Stephanie Davis, and I am Google's Vice President for ASEAN. It was about 16 years ago, in between jobs and before I joined Google, that I visited this region for the first time. I remember going into internet cafes to check in with my family back home, to read the news, and to see if Google had responded to my job application. Saying that things have changed since then is an understatement. Internet access now reaches far and wide beyond internet cafes, and it does so through better infrastructure, more affordable mobile phones, and more affordable data plans. This has brought forward so many opportunities. Opportunities to stay informed, opportunities to connect with others, and opportunities to find jobs in a new, well-paying, and fast-growing industry. But as more people continue to come online, they may lack the insights to assess the type of information that they're finding, to know what's safe for them to engage with, or what's safe to share with others. It is a true challenge, and it's the reason that we're all here together meeting today to answer the question of how we ensure that people feel confident online, that they're able to unlock new opportunities, but stay safe from scams and misinformation at the same time. 
So it's for that reason that I'm proud to announce that Google's philanthropic arm, Google.org, is helping the ASEAN Foundation with a one and a half million US dollar cash grant to address misinformation in all 10 ASEAN member states. We know that technology, together with our highly skilled volunteers, can help make a positive difference. And that's why we'll also be supporting this grant with Google's employees volunteering their time. By working with local organizations in each country, the ASEAN Foundation ultimately hopes to equip over 1,000 trainers with the right knowledge and skills to deliver media literacy training to more than 100,000 people in local communities. That includes youth, teachers, and parents but it also includes the elderly who are very much at risk. This is a two year ambitious plan, but it's a plan that we hope will advance our purpose. And that's to improve the lives of all those living in this region and to contribute to the local communities in which we operate. Thank you all so much. And I'm handing now over to Dr. Yang Miyoung, the executive director of the ASEAN Foundation and to His Excellency Dado Lim Jokhoi, Secretary General of ASEAN. Thank you. As we enter the age of Industry 4.0, anyone with internet access has now the power to share information to millions of people around the world. Many of us share information with a good intention. Sometimes we share some entertainment information just for fun and other times we share the information news to be helpful to others. However, not everyone fact check the information they share and sometimes they don't realize that the information they share is actually false and misleading. Research by the Trusted Web in Southeast Asia this year revealed that a third of their respondents admit to having accidentally shared false information on social media. They also believe they encounter misleading content in their social media feed one to five times per week. The widespread of misinformation and disinformation has become a very important issue because it affects our decisions. And as we all have seen during this pandemic, misleading information can be very harmful to our health and cause further distress in society. To tackle this issue, the ASEAN Foundation is delighted to partner with Google.org to implement the ASEAN Digital Literacy Program in 2022. This program marks an important milestone in our journey to strengthen the digital literacy skills of ASEAN citizens, transforming them into agents of change that can combat online misinformation and disinformation. ASEAN Foundation programs on misinformation and fake news in partnership with Google is a timely initiative in response to the rise of fake news and misinformation in recent years. This program further amplifies the ASEAN culture prevention and support our regional efforts in minimizing the harmful effect of fake news and promoting media literacy and cyber wellness through the work of ASEAN senior officials responsible for information and the ASEAN Cybersecurity Coordinating Committee. I welcome the launch of these important programs in developing digital survey and responsible ASEAN medicine and creating a safe cyber space for all.
Thank you, Ms. Stephanie Davis, Dr. Yang, and His Excellency Dato Lim Jokhoi for the wonderful remarks. And wow, what a great start for the ASEAN Digital Literacy Program. I'm sure 2022 will be an exciting year with the implementation of this program. Ladies and gentlemen, we have reached the end of today's forum. Please allow us to send our deepest appreciation to our moderator and to all the six speakers who have shared with us their knowledge and insights during the two sessions of roundtable discussions. I would also like to remind you that the Digital Literacy 101 comic can be downloaded on bit.ly slash ASEAN 101. And also, please stay tuned on ASEAN Foundation social media for further notice on the new ASEAN Digital Literacy Program. Once again, thank you everyone for participating on today's forum. Hopefully, we will see you again in the next event. I wish you a pleasant day, take care, and stay safe. that I am part of this organization that empowers young people to make an impact across the ASEAN region. ASEAN Found is an improvement in healthcare. The ASEAN Foundation provided me and my ASEAN peers the platform that we needed to learn, grow, and express our opinions. The online residency was very new for me and it could broaden my artistic view. Thank you very much, everyone. As a young leader, it has helped me realize how I can play my part to addressing some of the shared challenges we all face in ASEAN today. that I am part of this organization that empowers young people to make an impact across the ASEAN region. ASEAN Found is an improvement in healthcare. The ASEAN Foundation provided me and my ASEAN peers the platform that we needed to learn, grow, and express our opinions. The online residency was very new for me and it could broaden my artistic view. Thank you very much, everyone. As a young leader, it has helped me realize how I can play my part to addressing some of the shared challenges we all face in ASEAN today.